I watched over 24 hours of Warhammer and mini painting content for beginners, featuring over 52 creators, 88 videos, 911 pieces of advice, which I popped into a spreadsheet and distilled down into 39 common threads across the whole lot. It's everything you need to know to paint your first miniature. That's a lot of advice, so to warm up, here's the top 5. Between 10 and 33 creators recommend this. Buy yourself some cutters and a hobby knife, some super glue, some plastic cement, post attack, a selection of brushes, a wet palette, a good light, and a painting handle. Between 12 and 31 videos recommend doing this. When you're painting, thin your paints and apply your paint layers in multiple thin coats on all layers. Use washes to apply shades and dry brush to add highlights. Let every layer fully dry before you move on. But above all, listen to this advice. It's your hobby. Have fun. Be patient. Experiment. Oh yeah, and plan your minis black. You know what? I just wanted to make a simple video about how to paint miniatures. And, like most of my projects, it spiralled out of control. And I'm not gonna lie, it took bloody ages. First I searched for videos. I disregarded anything that was too advanced though, or too specific. I ended up with over 100 videos but then whittled those back to the 88 most relevant. Every single piece of advice I heard in those 88 videos I logged in a spreadsheet. Wow. It just hit home that this is how I've spent the last four weeks of my life. I gave it a category, either general advice, gear, basing, building, and painting. Then I sorted it all and counted all the duplicates. Anything that scored more than five made it into the introduction of the video. The rest, I chose based on my experience or because I thought it was good advice. Okay, so here we go. Buy the best you can afford because nicer tools generally make doing the job nicer. You're going to want a decent set of clippers. Clippers. Hobby clippers. You want them sharp with a flat back so you can get nice and close to the pieces you're trying to cut from the sprue. I've used this set from Amazon for years and they cost less than a tenner but I've just upgraded to this set which costs just over 35 quid. They are loads better. Also grab a decent hobby knife, a box cutter or a Stanley knife while doing a pinch but ideally you want something like an X-Acto knife or even better, a scalpel. Don't bother with a mold line remover though. You can just use the back of your knife blade or a blunt blade and they'll do the same job. To stick bits together, you either want some super glue or plastic cement, preferably both. Super glue can stick metal on resin minis as well. So if you're only gonna get one, grab super glue. But plastic cement physically welds the plastic together. So it gives a much better finish, but there's no take backs. But I just use blue tack or poster putty. Blue tack is amazing. You can use it for loads of stuff, from holding your miniatures on spray sticks and painting handles, through to dry fitting all the pieces to make sure they go together properly. Some creators even use it for masking stuff out. But personally, I prefer therapy putty. You're going to want a painting handle too. I like this one from Redgrass Games. It's fancy. It spins. But honestly, you can use whatever you like, from bottle tops and corks to old paint pots, Anything you can get a grip of, really, will work just fine. It's just to stop you touching the model while you're painting it. Brushes are a huge topic, but to get started, grab yourself a cheap set of round synthetic brushes from any old craft store. That'll do 90% of the painting for you. You also want to get yourself a cheap set of makeup brushes, which you can use as dry brushes, and maybe, if you're feeling fancy, you can get yourself one or two very good sable brushes. A size one or a size two are the sizes you want to pick up. Don't bother for anything too small and don't bother anything too big either. Honestly, even after watching 88 videos about how to paint, the jury's very much still out on which brush is best. About half the videos I watched, including Midwinter Minis and Sam Lentz, who are both incredible painters, use synthetics. I do about 99% of my miniature painting with synthetic brushes like this. Whereas other artists like Sergio Calvo and Squidmar use mainly sables for their work. So you can go either way, but while you're starting out, I would start cheap. Bear in mind also that a decent brush will cost you around £15 each, so you're going to want to take care of it too. To do that, you'll need to pick up some brush soap. I like this one from Joe Sonia, but you can also just use shampoo too. I have a few videos on brushes and how to take care of them, so you should check them out if you can. They're linked somewhere up there. I cannot emphasize how important a good hobby light is. It was recommended in 13 of the videos that I watched as an essential item and will make a real difference to your painting. You could just paint near a window, but honestly, having a couple of white lights surrounding your painting area will just enable you to see, which it turns out is incredibly important. The last of the essential items is a wet palette. Using a wet palette, in my opinion, is essential for color mixing. They make painting so much easier, it's untrue. My favorite, hands down, is the Redgrass Games Studio version two. And I've tested quite a few now, but if you haven't got 40 quid to splash, 
then you can just make your own. It's easy, you just need a box, a sponge and some parchment paper. I'll show you how to in this video somewhere up there. Most of the videos I watch don't really mention these bits, probably because they're so blindingly obvious. But you're also going to need a water container and some paper towel to wick off any excess moisture from your brush. Some sandpaper, sanding sticks or nail files are really useful for cleaning up the model as is milliput to fill in gaps on the model. Masks and nitrile gloves are really handy when you're handling solvents, or if you're feeling really fancy, you can get the best tool that possibly exists in the miniature market, which is a tattoo water bottle, like this. You'll notice I haven't mentioned paint. That's because paint can be complicated. Every single brand is different. And some of this, you're just gonna have to learn from experience. But from the data collected in this project, Vallejo is the brand to go for. Best balance of quality, price, and good paint coverage is Vallejo. It's easily the most widely recommended. And I love them too, so it's as good a starting point as any. That being said, the best paint is the one you can get a regular supply of easily. So just grab any paint you can and learn how to use it. It's as simple as that. You're also gonna want a primer, either a spray can or a rattle can, or an airbrush primer like this one. Don't worry if you don't have an airbrush, you can just apply it with a brush. Oh, and buy black. I'll explain why a little bit later, but in 88 of the videos I watched, 38 of them recommended using black primer and only 6 recommended another colour. The rest were sort of non-committal about the whole thing. Because hey, if it's good enough for Sergio Calvo, Zumakito and Squidmar, it's probably good enough for you and me too. If you're hobbying on a budget, an amazing place to source decent hobby supplies are either craft stores or drug stores. You want to be raiding the makeup aisle for makeup brushes, cotton buds, q-tips, that sort of stuff. Oh, and hair ties to hold your models and paintbrushes in place. A hair tie wrapped around it so it stores the brushes vertically. And in hobby stores you want to find cheap glues and basing materials. You're welcome. Baking soda is amazing! I'm just going to leave that there with no context whatsoever. Ask me about it down below. So you have some gear now. Good for you. Shall we talk about models? No! Seriously, before you buy, build or paint anything, work out what it is you want to do first. Planning will allow you to work out the types of models you need, the types of colours you want, and what other bits and pieces you're going to need to help you achieve it. It's well worth doing this right at the beginning. Obviously, if you're starting from absolute scratch and you don't know where to start, just buy something you think looks cool and get stuck in. Now we can talk about models. If you're starting out, don't buy a massive box set. Having huge amounts of unpainted minis kills your motivation. Don't crush it before you've even got started. Start with a small squad, ideally two or three. Perfect start if you want to dip your toes into Warhammer without spending a few hundred dollars for an entire army. Maximum 10 models, and make sure they're good models. Anything made by Games Workshop will be top quality and relatively easy to paint. But there are lots of great makers of larger scale models or 3D printed models, which are also cool too. The ones to avoid are cheap, low detail, low quality models because they take a lot of skill to make them look good. The best models have crisp lines, large, easy to read volumes and give you lots of options to paint them. Something like Space Marines for example. Personally, I think the Warhammer Underworld or Warcry box sets are absolutely perfect starter sets. Once you have them, they're likely to be on a plastic sprue, so you're going to need to remove all the pieces, clean them up and then stick them together. Cut as close as you can to the piece without actually touching it, and then trim off any excess with your hobby knife or sanding sticks. Use the back of your knife to remove mould lines, and that's it, you're done. You want to try and do it before you glue them all together too, because it's easier. Trust me, I'm a hypocrite and almost never do this, and always regret it. You really should read the instructions too, because there's nothing worse than clipping out all the pieces and having them in a big pile and then trying to work out what's going on later. Trust me, it does not make it easier. For super glue, the best piece of advice I can give you is try and use it sparingly and don't glue your fingers together. It can be easier to use tweezers to stick the really small pieces on, but honestly, I just try to be careful. Oh, and use an accelerant as well. If you don't know what an accelerant is, there are a little spray you can spray every super glue, which means it sets in seconds. They're awesome. For plastic glue, I use Tamiya Extra Thin. All brands of plastic cement are essentially the same thing anyway. Apply it to both sides of the plastic pieces and then leave it for 30 seconds. The plastic will start to melt and then you press it together. When you press it together, you'll see a little bit of the, pla the melted plastic squeeze out of the joint, wipe off the excess, and you'll end up with a nice tidy joint. If you need to though, you can go back in with a sanding stick and clean those joints up later. You may also hear some folks chatting about sub-assemblies, which is paint the model in bits to make sure you can reach all the different points of the model. I always operate on the understanding that if you can't see it when you're playing with it, you don't really need to paint it. And that's what Vince Rensrella says in his videos too, so 
If you don't believe me, believe him instead, because he's Vinci V, right? So now you have your little dude or dudette, and you want to paint it straight away, and that's what I usually do. That is terrible advice. Just all the videos I watched suggest do the basing first, and I agree with them. I find basing to be a little bit boring and sort of a bit of an afterthought. Yeah, by getting basing done early on when I'm all enthusiastic is a much better idea. If I try and do it later on when I haven't got any motivation, I'm more likely to just ignore it, to be honest. Plus, bases make your models look great. The simple advice for basing is to pick up some AK Interactive or Vallejo textured paint, pop it on the base, add a few grass tufts, and you're done. You can obviously make this stuff loads more impressive than that though, but this isn't the video for that. If you want to take it further, there are some great videos from people like Black Magic Craft and Geek Gaming Scenics, or Miniac, and you should definitely check those out because you can really tell a story with a base and lift your model. So assuming you haven't 100% just skipped that step, you're now ready to paint your model. Nervous? Well, you shouldn't be, especially when you're starting. You're gonna fail a lot, it's just inevitable. I'm actually a little bit jealous because you're gonna learn so much over the next few weeks and it's so much fun. You'll learn more from failing than from anything else. So the big piece of advice I can give you here is have fun, be patient. If you need to, take a break. So experiment a lot. And don't give up. The only way to get better is to practice. Now there's going to be a lot more to learn over the next few months and it can seem a little bit daunting but you don't have to learn it all at once. I would try to get a basic understanding of brush control and some basic painting tips, particularly layering, wet blending, glazing and stippling. Lila Mev and Zumakito both have incredible YouTube channels for it so I really suggest you check those out. You also want to look into how light value and colour theory come into painting, but this just isn't the video for that because Lord knows it's long enough already. It's like all these things, when you're first getting started you don't really need it, but as you get more and more experience it becomes more and more useful too. Thank you for listening to my TED talk. Seriously though, there's loads of practical things you can do to paint your first miniature, but the first thing you should do is pram your mouth black and give it a white zenithal. In all the YouTube research I did, 38 videos were recommended doing it this way. And that's for a couple of reasons. Black is really forgiving at hiding the mistakes. It also adds in instant shadows into all those little crevices and bits and pieces you can't reach. So when you paint something fully and there's a bit behind a gun you can't quite reach, it's already black, it would already be a shadow, it already looks naturally quite good. If you primed your model white, then you've got a big glaring white area you have to paint over. It's not impossible, it's just a little bit trickier. That's why you put a zenithal highlight over the top. A zenithal is just a top-down, dry-brushed or sprayed-on white coat of paint. And the white colour makes all the colours painted over the top of that a little bit brighter. So it gives you a little bit of instant highlight. Slap chart. It also helps you map out in your mind where the light direction is coming from and picks out all those little details you might have missed otherwise. It becomes obvious later why that's needed. The first thing you want to do when you pick up a paintbrush is moisten it. I'm very sorry for this. Seriously, that's where all these brush licking memes come from. Everything's better when it's moist, right? You also want to learn about paint consistency. Everyone tells you to thin your paint, but only a couple of channels do it really well. And my favorite is Cujo's channel. He'll tell you to thin your paint with water. If you add too much water, the paint will become sheer and that means it's too thin. If you don't add enough water, the paint will show brush strokes and that means it's too thick. You want to aim for somewhere in the middle of that. Once you have your paint how you like it, and it will differ from paint to paint and brand to brand, you can pop it onto the model. The next thing you want to do is block out the main colours on your model. You want to use a mid-tone to do that. If you don't know what a mid-tone is, let me show you. So if we're painting with red, this would be our shadow, this would be our highlight, and this colour in the middle is our mid-tone. And that's what we want to use for our blocking out and our base coating. You want multiple thin layers. To get a silky smooth base coat, as you're applying it, follow the wet edge. Again, Cujo's base coating tutorial is an absolute masterclass in this. Coat number one will be very patchy. That's completely normal. Don't panic. Coat number two should cover it all, but might not. And, and by coat number three or four, you should be completely covered. You want to paint like this on every layer of painting that you do. But, and this is a big but, you want to make sure every layer is fully dry before you paint over it. Otherwise what will happen is you'll tear the paint on the layer below and you'll end up with texture which you can't get rid of, which looks rubbish. Listen, the most important thing here is to cover that primer completely. You can afford to be a bit messy, so it's better to go over the lines a little bit than to leave patches uncovered because they'll be really noticeable later on. You want an opaque layer that covers everything. With the base coat done, 
the world is your oyster as to where you go next. There's lots and lots of different ways to approach this. This isn't really the video to explain all of those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on the easiest method. But you should absolutely try and experiment and learn from and copy other painters as you go. First up, use a wash. Washes add shading to the miniatures and are just thinned down paints that settle into the recesses. You can make your own using thinned down versions of your own paint or you can just buy something off the shelf like Citadel's Null Oil, for example. Apply it all over your model, working quickly to avoid pooling. If the wash does pool though, just quickly rinse out your brush, wick off any excess moisture, and then dab your brush into that pool of wash, and it'll, the brush will suck it all straight back out again. It's going to look messy at this point, so don't panic. You want to go back into your base coat and tidy everything up. That means basically painting over the model again, but avoiding those areas of recess that you've just washed and shaded. You could also look at oil washes or panel liners here too, but let's keep it simple for now. Next, you want to add highlights. Now the simplest way to do that is to use a dry brush. You want to try and highlight all the surfaces that are facing towards your light source. And the easiest way to do that is to use one of those cheap makeup brushes you bought earlier. It's really simple. You just add some paint to your dry brush, then wipe 99% of it off. Then, using a sweeping downward motion, wipe your makeup brush over your model. That will cause the paint to catch on the only the very highest surfaces and details and just cause those to be picked out. Now there is absolutely nothing wrong with calling it done here, particularly if you're feeling the emotional burn a little bit. But if you're feeling confident, you can push on to the next step, which is details. Now up to this point, I've been working under the assumption that you're using your cheap synthetic brushes, because that's what 90% of the other videos I watched suggest you should do. But if you did invest in a more expensive sable brush, now is the time to crack it out. Details are all about precision, and you're going to need to work hard to be neat. I, and at least six other videos that I watched, recommend getting into a solid, stable position before you start. Rest your elbows on your desk, touch your wrists, and cradle your precious miniature like it's your own child. Remember to breathe, and definitely don't hold your breath, because that'll make you shakier if anything. And paint in tiny little motions. Be patient, and when you make a mistake, no, I said when, not yeah, try not to swear too much. You just have to touch it up and start again. You've got this. If you need to though, take a break. It's supposed to be fun, remember? Three videos, including Lila Mev's, recommend doing all the hard bits first. And that works really well if you're doing a more traditional style of layering and wet blending type painting. But for washes and dry brushing, it doesn't quite work. So you're gonna need to paint those details right at the end. So just do your best. The very last step is to paint a black base on your rim. And that's it. And the end of each painting list, you're going to want to clean your brush unless it's going in a bin. Which it definitely shouldn't be because even old rubbish brushes can be useful. Now, if you stuck with me this far, thank you very much. This has been such a huge project, but I've really saved the best advice till last. Just before that, though, can you appease the AI for me? Pop a click on the like button if you've enjoyed this and leave a comment down below. I'd really love to know where you're at in your hobby journey and if you've got any other piece of advice for other hobbyists too. If you have any questions about the video, jump on over to my Discord server, which is free to enter and is filled with loads of friendly hobbyists who are happy to give advice. Now, let's get into the final chapters. Myth busting. There are some real old wives tales circulating this hobby, and after watching 24 hours and 88 videos, I sort of got a fairly good grasp on what they are. It was great to watch so many videos with so many different approaches to mini painting. But if anything, having so many different approaches just reinforces the point that there isn't one way to do something. So just experiment, have fun, and find your own way. Number one, two thin coats. Sorry, Duncan. The idea is sound, but, but even Duncan himself says the number of coats depends on the type of paint, the brand, the conditions, all sorts of different factors. Different pigments have different opacities and need different amounts of water to get the right consistency. They also dry completely different as well, so you may find yourself doing multiple coats to get the same sort of result, even using the same colour. It's not a bad thing. Every paint has its own learning curve, though, so you just have to practice. Number two, paint brand doesn't matter. Everyone has their favourites, but in the end, it's about the right tool for the right job. And you'll discover what you like as you use them. Start with something generic like Vallejo or Citadel, then maybe try Scale 75 or Artist Heavy Body Acrylic for something completely different. As you get more confident, you may even branch into oils or enamels too. Exciting. Number three, you can't get paint in your ferrule. It'll ruin your brush. Controversial, this one. Obviously, you want to take care of your paintbrushes. Squidmar just uses the tip, as does Ataraxia and many other creators. And their painting is outstanding. Multi-award winning painter Sergio Calvo, though. So loading correctly means 100 
person. Just fool. So fool. I agree. Brushes are just tools to use. Take care of them by all means by washing them out at the end of every session, and they'll last ages. But they won't last forever. Number four. Thin your paints with water. Four or five creators like Marco Frasoni or Vince Venturello recommend using mediums to thin your paints. Most others just use water. So, unless you find you prefer using mediums to thin with, just use water. You'll be all good. And number five. You don't need fancy gear. Wet palettes are great. That latest paint shaker is an incredible tool. But when it comes down to it, what really makes you a better painter is practice. And lots of it. I'm going to leave you with what I thought was the best advice from all the videos I watched. And that's from Roman Lepat. You are in control of your environment. If something's uncomfortable or not fun, change it. It'll be a much more enjoyable experience if you do. Don't compare yourself to others. Sure, there are some great painters out there, but they're all at different points on their journey. So be kind to yourself and learn from great teachers. Study artwork, follow amazing painters on Instagram, follow their YouTube channels, ask questions in forums, and talk to your local gaming store because they really do know what they're doing. At the end of the day, we have an amazing community right at your fingertips, so make the most of it. And most of all, and most of all, if you get a chance to, attend an in-person painting class. In May, I'm hosting Roman Lepat's painting classes just near my home in Stonehenge in the UK. You can find all the details for that on my website, which I've linked down below as well, along with many links to all the products I've mentioned in this video. So if you want to attend a beginner's painting class taught by one of the world's best painters, there are nine tickets left at this point. This has been a blast to make, but wow, was this an epic project. Thank you so much to my patrons for bearing with me while I didn't release any content for over a month. You're a constant source of inspiration, and when I was on my hobby journey, I had loads of little hiccups. But occasionally I had moments where things just clicked, and I talk about that in this next video.